I'm Karen, founder and skipper of Sporting Sheroes, an organization that helps women in sport raise their profile and develop great sponsorship packages. This is the Data Talks Sport CDP Crash Course Podcast. Data Talks makes it easy for sports organizations to sell more tickets and merchandise and negotiate sponsorship agreements of higher value. Our community, Women in Sport Beyond the Hashtag, is for everyone involved in women's sports space. And we'd love you to join us, whatever your sport, whatever your level, and whatever your role. So welcome to the August episode of my monthly guest host slot. And this month, I want to talk about the direction of travel of sponsorship, particularly for teams, clubs and events. The gambling industry has been in the news a lot over the past few months or even the past year, as media, governments and sports clubs wrestle with their consciences over the tension between income generation and well-being. In Belgium and the Netherlands, steps have been taken to instigate a wide-ranging ban on gambling advertising, not just in sport, and in the UK, a recent poll indicated that 52% of Britons would also like to see a blanket ban. Sport and betting have been inextricably linked for many years, but in an initial move towards a loosening of this relationship, Premier League clubs will ban gambling sponsors on the front of shirts from 2026-7 season. My personal feelings are that, like bans on tobacco advertising, this is a good thing. Put simply, I don't understand why something is great for our health and well-being as sport, which also brings us so much joy and excitement when we are spectators, would enter into partnership with companies that deliver products and services that will never have a positive impact on health and well-being. I'm absolutely binary about that. And I think it will be interesting to see whether the same debates emerge around alcohol over the course of time. The downside is that for clubs that have traditionally relied heavily on betting sponsorships, this may leave a substantial revenue gap. I actually don't believe it should. We really don't miss tobacco advertising. And this should be seen as an opportunity, not as a threat. It's easy to go for the quick win, the low-hanging fruit. And when organisations are already there, figuratively with their pen on the checkbook, to give you money, it's equally easy to be lazy about looking out to the horizon for new partners. Yet the world is going through a seismic shift in terms of what people and organisations feel passionately about, other than sport, of course. For those organisations that are clear about their core values, who work hard on understanding all stakeholders in their business and adopt a partnership approach, and who invite new and exciting potential sponsors to the table, I believe there are exciting and financially rewarding collaborations to be forged. There are three key areas to get absolutely clear on to start changing the traditional trajectory of your sports sponsorship. They are the what, the how, and the who. Let's start with the what. What assets and benefits can you offer a potential sponsor for their return on investment? Yes, logo placement is part of the mix, but dig deep into every aspect of your club, your business and your team. Do some market research with your stakeholders, all of them, players, fans, merchandise suppliers, staff, outlets, and establish what they love about you and what they feel you do really well. Then ask them to be brutally honest and tell you what they really don't enjoy. What frustrates them, annoys them, that you get complaints about? Know your strengths, but know your weaknesses even better. And then benchmark what you do better than your competitors. Once you have the answers to all of these, you're in a good place to up your game where needs be and understand your most effective touch points that will deliver brand awareness and loyalty for you and your sponsor. And you can build a really great asset list. So that's the what. The next step is how. So yes, you can have a list of assets developed from your what. But for a modern wave of new and exciting organisations, the how is the exciting bit. 
It's all about activation. It's great to have stylish socials and creative kit, but activation is about the engagement triangle between club or team, sponsor and audience. Activation isn't just an e-blast announcing a new sponsor, but perhaps running a challenge, a prize draw, or perhaps holding an online live Q&A to bring the audience closer. Get innovative, be creative. It really will serve you well. A McKinsey report found that sponsorship executives who can fully gauge the impact of their campaigns can increase returns by up to 30%. The study indicated that winning sponsorships include a strong presence in key growth areas, for example, women's sport, excellent online assets, opportunities to network with customers via online communities, sustainability in products, optimised digital marketing channels and flexible planning and budgeting. The third element is the who. As I said before, there are sectors that are synonymous with sports sponsorship, but as younger audiences demonstrate a different set of values, for example, around inclusivity, work-life balance, the environment and sustainability, so new sectors and businesses are emerging and gaining prominence with huge opportunities for growth. Here are some examples. With more people working from home, pleasure the blending of work and leisure, now features highly in people's lives. And with it comes the growth of spend on leisure wear, health-focused appliances and nutrition and fitness equipment. Don't believe me? Just think about the rise and rise of air fryer sales or the explosion of home delivery recipe boxes with a sales pitch based around healthy eating without the hassle of planning and shopping. And with so many people working from home, Sport and leisure wear has never been so popular as people now have time for a run in the morning instead of an hour's commute. Other fast growing sectors are eco-friendly construction, sustainable food production and architects, planners and designers who are working on towns and cities to better meet the fast changing needs of people and businesses in this brave new world. And of course, artificial intelligence and the scope for exciting activations in this field must be enormous. Those sectors surely chime better with sport than tobacco or gambling. Let me leave you with a final couple of thoughts. The sectors I mentioned have a very clear line of sight to sport, but there are others proactively promoting an active lifestyle, even though their own product or service maybe has a slightly less obvious affiliation. Take Vitality as an example. They are now a key leader in sports sponsorship. And their core product is insurance, but they really lean into health and life insurance and they lead with healthy living engagement and sponsor hockey, netball, football and cricket, particularly on the women's side amongst others, as well as engaging in community activities. The world is changing at pace. People's expectations are changing with it. And the early adopters who redefine what, how and who they are looking to work with will steal a march on the rest, financially and operationally. With it comes greater fan loyalty, better brand positioning and a chance to shine amongst the rest when it comes to attracting players, staff, volunteers and, of course, sponsors. So that's a wrap for this month. I'm Karen, the founder and skipper of Sporting Sheroes, guest hosting this podcast for Data Talks. Come and connect with me and the awesome Data Talks team on social media. And don't forget to join our fantastic community, Women in Sport, beyond the hashtag. All the links are in the episode description. 